Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Breaking the Fourth Wall. I'm your host, Junior Ruiz, alongside my co-host, David Sanchez. What up, people? I said your name for you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. No problem. So it's been a while, David. Yeah, man. You know, we've had some, uh, we did the store footage for Rad Vintage. I had Jeff Balky on for the last two weeks, and now you're back. And we're coming back into some great news. Uh, Not a major announcement, because it's not It's not official. It's not confirmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 But Spider-Man back with Marvel by Sony. Um, what was that dude's name? You can't be a complete jerk because it's actually due to the fact that Sony is uh, going through a lot of corporate issues. They're, they're actually not trying to lay off people and, and they're willing to sell off Spider-Man. It's like, they, like the offer's on the table. That's why it's not confirmed. Spider-Man is one of many offers that are on the table. It's up to, hey man, what if, what if Marvel doesn't, doesn't come in with the biggest offer? Did you think about that? They will. But no, I, I didn't okay, think about because that. it is Disney money, all yeah. right? Yeah, because they could drop it. Ah, fuck, here's a billion dollars. It's mouse money. Throw hire, it hire more people. Yeah. <laughs> what, like nine Spider Man? No, let's that, that's, that's, that's say they do not make the best offer. Yeah, so they they come in just thinking. If they come into the to this to this deal thinking, hey, we're gonna get them. Yeah, if they're too confident. If they're they're just coming in like jerks. Like, man, we're gonna get it. We don't have to do anything. And then someone someone like you didn't expect like like uh, like. Legendary, or or Lionsgate, they're like, whoop, five hundred million, give us Spider Man. Yeah, but that'd what, be insane. What's to stop the House of the Mouse from just being like, really, you want to go there? One of our movies made half that here, hundred million. Yeah, I think I think. Uh, or, I'm sorry, you said five hundred million. I just, I just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'd be like, woo, like what? Like, Godzilla. <laughs> so Max Landis tweeted this news, and uh, it, like he said, it's yet to be confirmed. Uh, we'll just have to wait. He said uh, it should be interesting in the next. What do you say? Five months or something in the tweet. Yeah. By five in the next five months or so, we should know. And of course, this, you know, this was uh, tweeted a few weeks back now, but still worth uh, mentioning. Yeah, but I mean, good luck to all the employees at Sony. Uh, hopefully, uh, Spider Man does come to the rescue. You know, who owns Columbia Pictures, or is that something separate? Do you Col- know? No, no, they're owned by something. Isn't it like Columbia Isn't TriStar? Well, no, TriStar's Columbia gone. Paramount. Is it Paramount or I is think it Sony? Paramount. Not sure anymore, man. Well, whoever owns Columbia needs to hurry up and get on Ghostbusters three. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, man. Yeah. Especially if they are owned by Sony, then that if they lose Spider Man, Ghostbusters could. I think I think uh, Ghostbusters is a is a Sony thing. I believe it is. Which I hope that property comes on the the. The table as well, and someone could just scoop them up. I, I don't Marvel have, comes in, we'll take that. Like, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I hope, I hope someone either like Marvel or Time Warner scoops that one up. You know, Marvel's not gonna scoop that up. No. But it would be cool. It, w- it would be cool. I think, I think once they take uh, Amazing Spider-Man, we're gonna see some, some ama- not to be like, no pun intended, but like some amazing <laughs> little like, like, uh, like backdrops and vignettes like in the middle of a fight scene, like, like in in an Iron Man movie, a You'll building like gets the- destroyed and Spider-Man swings by. I, I, I think every every geek would just shit on themselves, like, oh, God, bathroom. <laughs> Speaking of which, that was my exact reaction to the newest trailer of Transformers 2. When you made that post... Transformers, what is this, three I mean, four years ago? Like 50, Transformers 50, whatever. I said Transformers 2, my bad. But like, uh, when I that, that visual of the Dinobots, I literally just... just if, if I weren't at work, I would have just gotten up and clapped. That yeah, because I, I was very surprised when I saw that post. Or the, the comment. You're like, oh my god, clap, clap, clap. I was like, really? I it's it's perfect to have the humans and and the Autobots to have some kind of rivalry because that's like the perfect reaction. You brought this war to us. These people came and killed so many people. You oh, know, so you want to go into the Transformers talk? Okay, okay let's no, go just, into just, 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 talk. Real, just real <laughs> quick, just real quick, because it's it's just in my mind, and I think I think those social issues like that mixed with mindless violence. Makes for a great movie. That's the trailer at the beginning that you saw when he was like, oh, and they had the, 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 whoever it was, they had the Transformers strapped to the table, and they're like, oh, this is uh, this metal is what he's made out of, and they're yeah. sitting there messing with it, and then uh, Bumblebee's like, you're obsolete. So when Bumblebee transforms and he stares at another robot, it turns out it's a mirror image of himself, but just in black and red. Oh. Yeah. Did you catch that? I, did, I didn't catch yeah, that. Yeah, it's, no. it's, it's, it's a clone of him, just different color. Oh. 
So I'm guessing it's something was okay. We don't need you. We have our own man-controlled transformers. Right, 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 right. You know what I mean? And then um, well, you hear Optimus in the trailer saying, you know, we need a bigger army. And then all of a sudden, oh, here comes that's Grimlock. very interesting. There was that storyline uh, where there was a remote control Megatron. Remember that? No. Yeah, there, there in was the like old cartoon. No, in the comic no. books. The Marvel. Uh, oh, the Marvel comics. It might have been the Marvel comics, or it might have been when they first when they first started with IDW. But there was like a whole thing where like the army or like there was a general who had like I think it was the Marvel books, and they had a Megatron subdued. Mm-hmm. They had a remote control. And the, yeah, well, you know, Megatron's not in this movie, right? Oh yeah, he's pretty much dead, right? Yeah, so he's dead, or he's making the wave for Galvatron. It is Galvatron. So that is Galvatron with the no, that's Lockdown. Oh, and that big ass spaceship behind him—that's his ship. Lockdown is the uh, Decepticon bounty hunter. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Galvatron transforms into. Remember, um, remember in like early two thousands, right around nine eleven, uh, they were given that uh, Transformers robots in disguise cartoon where Optimus was the fire truck. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 anime, the anime, one. the anime. One. Okay, yeah. remember when Galvatron makes the Decepticons and they were like a side team. Yeah. Remember Nemesis Prime was the Black Optimus. I do remember that. Ah. Picture that in movie form. Okay. That's Galvatron. I got it. Galvatron is the black Optimus. All right. Well, black that's painted Optimus. I just that, want to that, is, that is soon <laughs> to come. Uh, I can't well, wait. That's later this month. I can't yeah. wait. The, we, I mean, we still have to get through through X Men. That's uh, it. Amazing, amazing two just happened. You watched it. I watched it. I haven't episode. watched it. As a lot of you guys know, I'm not a big fan of. Amazing Spider Man, anything like I'm not, I'm just not a Spidey fan. I think he's like one of the most whiniest characters in the world. Uh, but you saw Amazing Spider Man too. Have what you can no you shame? No, I don't have any shame because I've never liked the guy. The my thing, I, my favorite part about Spider Man ever was Clone Wars. I, I was so That's sad Star about Wars. I mean, um, the Clone Saga, the Clone Saga, which one? Uh, the, the original, the original, where it was just the two clones and Jackal and yeah. the smokestack, yeah. Not the '90s one. Oh, when there was like eighty thousand of them. Nah, yeah, it got kind of blown out of proportion. That's when they portion. introduced Scarlet Spider. Yeah, oh. I like Scarlet Spider. I was a big fan. Yeah. Because I mean, he was just a sweater in spandex. Like, Remember when oh, John, anybody can be a Spider? Remember when John came here cosplaying a Sp- uh, Scarlet Spider? Yeah, it was just a. Uh, that was pretty good like costume. Though. And, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, amazing too, man. If if you could if you could actually sell me on this, because you and I we always have difference of opinions on certain movies. Uh, if you could try to sell me on Amazing 2, what are the high points? There's a lot of them. Um, spoiler alert. They kill Gwen. Oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I will admit there was two moments in this movie where I actually jumped out of my seat. One of them being when they killed Gwen. The first one being there was a battle between Spider-Man and Electro. But uh, the, uh, the Gwen thing, that... This whole thing was based off of the Gwen Stacy's saga, so she was Somewhat. you knew she was gonna die. Yeah, they, they handled it pretty spot on to the book with some minor changes, of course. Yeah. Um. So, but for those wondering, the first time I jumped, I was sitting next to a little kid, and there was a scene where Spider Man like fighting Electro, and there's like this thing I don't remember what it was. There's something on the screen, and Electro jumps through it at the camera, and the little kid fucking jumped three feet in the air, and him jumping made me jump. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get scared. I'm telling you, I promise. Yeah, sure. I promise. Yeah, scared. Yeah, scared. <laughs> but no, okay. So the Gwen Stacy thing. Being a fan of Spider Man, you can't y'all like you said. You already knew it was coming. You could, and with the with the, with, the way, ugh, with the way the movie did it, it was kind of foreshadowed. Like they showed the bridge. They showed Gwen and Spider Man embracing on the bridge a couple times. Yeah, it's in the foreground. You know, you're like, okay, something's coming. So with uh, they did it where the Goblin was responsible. Right, right. But they didn't do it on the bridge. Which I don't understand why. They should have just went that route. No, I think that was their twist. <laughs> they did it like there's they're fighting inside this clock tower, uh-huh. and uh, Gwen's falling down. Peter throws out the web. He catches her. He's holding on to her, and he's fighting Goblin with one arm while the clock gears are going. So he sticks his foot in there trying to stop the gears because uh, if the gears kept going, they would have snapped the web. So. He break, you know, using his proportionate strength of a spider, breaks the gears. Goblin goes flying. The web does snap. Gwen starts falling. Peter turns, throws the web, and one of the most coolest cinematic things I've ever, you know, I've seen on a screen, especially in a Spider-Man movie. Okay. 
the camera follows Spider-Man's arm, right? So all you see is his arm. You see the web going. The camera starts to follow the strand of web in slow motion. The end of the webbing forms almost a hand reaching out. It was so cool. It's going. Gwen's falling. You see all the gears coming in. You're like, oh my god, is the web going to get it? The gear would move just at the nick of time. You go, and it's all it's an overhead, so you see Gwen falling down. You know, that's the whole perspective of it. Going, you're going, going. All of a sudden, it shifts, and you're like looking at like if you're standing on the floor, and you're looking straight, and Gwen's body just goes, and it bounces back because his web catches her at the exact same time that she hits the ground. Mm. And you hear just all the sound in the movie disappears, and you just hear this horrible thud. Nice. Dude, it was crazy. It was crazy. I, but, um, so aside from that, um, Electro is the main villain. You're right, right? Every comic book movie always has those cheesy one liners. For some reason, I've always been able to just tune them out, like, yeah, whatever, not pay attention to them. Electro had the cheesiest one. It stood out so bad to me. You know, he's he's first Electro. He just got the powers. He's first confronting Spider-Man. And the whole thing is it's Max Dillon's birthday, the day he turns into Electro. So he the cheesiest line probably in comic book movie history, he goes, it's my birthday. Time to light my candles. And, and see, shoots. here's, and the, thing, like, here's ah. the thing with, the, with Electro. Um, as, each t- as the trailers came out and you're, and you're watching these trailers and you get trying to get sold into the movie, whenever I saw Electro, whenever I saw uh, the way... Jamie Fox was was portraying the character the way he was acting out these lines. Um, what put me off was the fact that it, it was reminiscent of a Joel Schumacher Batman movie. <laughs> and anybody who is very familiar with a Joel Schumacher Batman movie Everyone. knows <laughs> knows that that they that there's like these overacted cheesy one liners. That was the only one that stood you out. shouldn't be able to do that unless you're Arnold Schwarzenegger. But speaking of one-liners, they did nail Spider-Man in terms of him being that smart ass while he's fighting the criminals. Every time, at the anytime he was fighting a low common thug, even you know there was times where he's fighting Electro and Goblin, where he was just throwing out lines like at the beginning of the movie, he's fighting uh, the guy who I forgot his name, the guy who will turn into Rhino, right, right. Paul Giamatti, but the character I don't remember Rhino's real name. And he's st- he's driving a stolen truck. Peter jumps on the driver's side and he's like knocking on the window and he's like, what? He's like down and he's just so he's like do you know you know and he's just going he's just being total smart ass spider-man and it fit it's like that's what it should like in the first movie okay when he's just like the guy pulls out the blade and he's like oh no you know my weakness small knives you know he's just being a smart ass it fit it, I, all, all around dude spider-man 2 was good my biggest fear was the the inclusion of three villains that were gonna bog it down it didn't electro was the main villain goblin came in at the right time they built goblin up slowly throughout the movie as he was going with electro Goblin came in, served his purpose. After Gwen dies, the movie fast forwards, I think, six months. And then that's when the end of the movie, because Gwen died, Peter decides he's not Spider-Man anymore. So it's, you know, the city saying, where's Spider-Man, where's Spider-Man? Aunt May even admitting that the city should, you know, they need him. He decides, you know what, it's time to come back. And at the end of the movie, he confronts Rhino, and that's how the movie ends. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and then you see, um, you know, they lead into Sinister Six. And the guy in the first movie that came out of the shadows in the jail cell that everybody thought was Norman Osborn, not Norman Osborn. His name is Mr. Fierce. Never heard of him before. A lot of speculation saying that he could be Mysterio. I'm like, I don't think that because Mr. Fierce seemed to have, like, sway over Harry Osborn. Like, no, this is how it is. And, like, why would, in the first movie, he have sway over, you know, Quentin Beck was a nobody. You know, all he wanted was attention. So for them to say this is Quentin Beck, I highly, highly doubt that. So, but one thing that they did, they cut out the movie that was in the Maybe original Tombstone. trailer. Mm, Maybe. Well, but Tombstone was just a, a run-of-the-mill mobster. Um, one thing that they cut out of the original trailer, or it wasn't the original trailer they cut out of the movie, is a scene where Mr. Fierce is walking past the cells. You see the octopus arms, the vulture wings. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is in the movie, but in the trailer, after he passes the rhino suit, there's an orb with the symbiote in it. Oh. They cut that out. So once uh, he gets past the rhino suit, it cuts. What? I don't know. Oh, that's word. Well, even though they're hearing all that, I, I think I'm still happy that I'm just going to stream it. 
I'm gonna steal that movie, Sony. What else? Even after the beginning of this episode, I'm still gonna steal that movie. Fuck your employees. <laughs> <laughs> no, what? no. Uh, yeah, I mean, me personally, uh, to to pay for another Spider-Man relaunch, I think I'd rather just save my money for maybe like X-Men or Transformers coming out. Which X-Men? We will have watched by the time this episode airs. Yeah. But since we have not watched it yet, continuity error, there's a lot of positive reviews on it. Len Wein posted on Facebook that it was probably the most perfect movie. So Wow. Yeah. That's saying a lot. That's saying a lot, a lot from, a, from a guy that's been grumpy over anything Marvel because they totally... They destroyed his creation. They destroyed his creation that, that is Wolverine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I well, guess going going back into the comics. Uh, well, I gotta give my rating. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. Give me your rating. I'm gonna give it two and a half out of four stars. Mm, see, even right there, after so much build up for it to get two and a half stars, I don't want to go ahead and give it a three, man. I don't know, but it makes me feel like like uh, a lot of the action overpackaged a lot of like uh, what with the lack of substance. Nah. I just want to give it a two and a half to be safe. You I just don't, don't know what I meant. Sure. No, I don't. <laughs> well, that's all we got time for, actually. All right, yeah, that's all we got time for. So yeah. join us next week when we shall continue talking more good stuff, as always. Yeah. For everything Comics Remix, check out comicsremix.com for the spinner rack, the lockup, collector's corner, breaking the fourth wall, and occasionally some reviews here and there. And to show where we'll be uh, appearing at to record and all that. Comicsremix.com. Yeah. All right. Check it out. You guys have a good night. Thanks Later, for guys. watching.